this video, we will learn how to perform the chi-squared test uh, of independence. Professor Eggleston, always interested in improving her teaching effectiveness, has decided to undertake a careful analysis of her student evaluations from the past three years. A matter of special concern to her is how she is viewed by students of different majors. Each of Professor Eggleston's students can be placed into a category according to the student's major school, as shown in Table 1 below. Students who have majors from more than one school are not included. The last question on the student evaluation form, question 17, is Would you recommend this professor to another student? There are three possible answers for this question. Yes, maybe, and no. Table 1 is a contingency table that contains a summary of the responses to question 17 for a random sample of 500 of Professor Eggleston's students. In each cell of the table is written three numbers. The first number is the observed cell frequency F sub O. The second number is the expected cell frequency F sub E under the assumption that the variables students major, school, and answer to question 17 are unrelated. And the third number is the value observed cell frequency minus expected cell frequency quantity squared divided by expected cell frequency. The numbers labeled total are totals for observed frequency. Fill in the missing values of table 1, round your expected frequencies to at least two decimal places, and round your um, observed cell frequency minus expected cell frequency quantity squared over expected cell frequency values to at least three decimal places. Then, using the 10 hundredth level of significance, perform a test of the hypothesis that the variables students major school and answer to question 17 are unrelated. Complete table 2 based on your test. The test of independence has um, very standard hypothesis statements. The null hypothesis says the variables are independent. The alternative hypothesis says variables are dependent, meaning one of the variables somehow is impacted by another or vice versa. There is a correlation of some sort. So the test for independence will, will answer the question whether there is uh, a relation or no relation between the student's major school and the answer to question 17. Because we will be working under the assumption that the variables are independent, we can use the multiplication rule for independent events to compute the expected frequencies. And we will do that by multiplying the row total by column total and dividing that product by the table total. This formula will be used to fill in some of the numbers in the table um, on the next slide. As you can see, some of the values have been already uh, computed for us. So all of these values that have been typed in already done for us. We just need to do four more cells and each one has two quantities. According to the description on the previous slide, the second uh, set of numbers uh, describes the expected frequencies, which we will compute by using the formula I just referenced. So to find this quantity here, I had to multiply the column total of 244 by the corresponding row total of 95. So 244 times 95, then divide this product by the total of the entire table, which is 500, the sample size. And that's how you get 46.36. You continue to do the same thing for the next um, uh, number we need to compute. The column total, 244, times the row total of 105, and then don't forget to divide this product by 500 to get 51.24. Repeat this for the other cells. Now, the numbers you see in blue are those quantities that uh, we have seen being computed in um, a previous topic uh, with goodness of fit test. They're very similar. So you're going to subtract the observed minus expected frequency, square that difference, and then divide by the um, uh, expected frequency of 46.36. That's how you get 0 0.873. Again, 46 observed. 
minus 51.24 expected. Square this difference and then divide by 51.24 once more to get this number 0 0.536. Repeat this for the other two cells. Once you fill in the entire cell, there is a very important number you need to compute. You may remember a similar process again with the goodness of fit test. Uh, add all these quantities that you computed. All of these quantities will add up together to the chi-square value. And that is my test statistic. 12.10 when rounded to two decimal places. So when I added all of these numbers rounded to three decimal places, the third set of numbers in each cell, that gives me 12.10. That's my test statistic chi-square. Now I need to know the critical value corresponding to the requested level of significance. And I have to reference my table 2 to continue this process. Please, I would like to remind you one more time. My hypotheses are the null hypothesis. The variables are independent. So a uh, student's major has no impact on their answer for question 17. Uh, alternative hypothesis says there are dependent, there is some correlation. So my test statistic for the test of independence is always chi-squared. Degrees of freedom this time will be found by a slightly different approach. Degrees of freedom for this test is found by a number of rows minus 1 multiplied by number of columns minus 1. So in this case, I have a 3 by 3 table. 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 1 is 4. So 4 is my degrees of freedom. We already know the test statistic to be 12.10. Uh, uh, we discussed that already. So back to critical value. We would like to find a critical value at 10% level of significance. So I would like to work with um, chi-square distribution with 10% in the right tail. I want to know what this quantity is that separates the 10% from 90%. Remember the equation? We can use the numeric solver on our calculator. I would like to know um, the upper boundary of the interval between 0 and some value x with 4 degrees of freedom uh, inserted into chi-square CDF function. And as a result, this area has to be 90 uh, percent. So 90 percent between 0 and unknown value x with 4 degrees of freedom. The calculator gives you 7.78. So this must be the boundary that separates this critical region from the acceptance region. Because the test statistic happens to be quite big compared to my critical value 7.78, I have uh, evidence to reject the null hypothesis, which means independence is not there. The variables are dependent. Students' answers have something to do with their major. Can Professor uh, Eggleston conclude that the variables students major score and answer to question 17 are related, we're going to say yes, because we rejected the independent statement in the null hypothesis. Now I would like to demonstrate how to use your TI-84 to perform this test for you. TI-84 has a test programmed into it called chi-squared test. Chi-squared test is the test for independence. To use this test, you need to enter the observed values into matrix A. It's important to always enter observed values into matrix A and not any other matrix. The test will produce matrix B for you and will give you the expected values, which we have in this table in red. These things will be produced for you automatically. Uh, the test also will produce the chi-square test statistic, which is the sum of all of these quantities that we uh, add together to get the uh, test statistic, all of these quantities that look like this. Unfortunately, test will not produce those for you. It will give you the sum, but not the individual entries. So you will have to compute these numbers by yourself using the formula below. Let's take a look at how this test works. Um, to enter data into matrices, you need to use this function here and press second x to the negative first power to access that menu. Scroll to the right to edit your matrix to the appropriate size. This time we need a 3 by 3 matrix. Enter your observed values one at a time, pressing enter after each number. 
The calculator will fill numbers in one row at a time. When you're done entering data into your matrix A, observed data, uh, run the test, press stat, test, scroll to chi-square test option C, choose that option by pressing enter, and as you can see, observed are pre-programmed to be in matrix A, and expected values will show up in matrix B after you run this test. Press enter a few times until you get the result. Please notice that the chi-square test statistic that we computed by adding the nine quantities um, coming from this formula over here, we added all these together to get the test statistic manually, we can get this number by just running this test. This test also shows you what the p-value is, which can be used uh, if you want to use the p-value method for this hypothesis test. Now let's see how we can see the expected values. You need to go back to matrices. Second, x to the negative first power will take you to that menu. Scroll down to uh, matrix B, press enter, and again press enter one more time to see all the expected values that were produced as the result of the chi-square test. So instead of computing the expected values manually by multiplying the total for the column by the total for the row and then dividing by the total for the table, which you're welcome to do. You could just run the chi-square test to get all of those computed for you at once and present it to you in a 3 by 3 matrix. Now I would like to compare the results we got manually to the results that our TID4 produced. Notice, I just copied the results we had done previously. You probably recognize all of this as just a copy of um, a couple of slides back in this presentation. Please remember we got chi-square test statistic to be 12.10, and that's exactly what the TI-84 produced using the uh, chi-square test. When we performed the hypothesis test using the critical value approach, we realized that because the test statistic is 12.10 and it is greater than the critical value of 7.78, test statistic ends up being in the rejection region and therefore we would reject the null hypothesis claiming that the variables are independent. We concluded that the variables are related. If I use the p-value approach to the same problem, I will um, compare the p-value to the level of significance alpha. According to the screen uh, of my calculator right now, the p-value is 0 0.017 when rounded to three decimal places. If I compare it to the significance level of 10%, it is clearly true that the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. And if that's the case, we always reject h sub 0 just like we rejected h sub 0 using the critical value approach. Therefore, whether you choose to use the critical value or the p-value approach to this hypothesis test, you should get the same result.